who will speak about Sison. I thought it's C Python, but I just know it's not. So I'm really curious to find out what it actually is. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, good evening, everyone. Um, um, I'm going to present um, Scython to you all and explain how you can use Scython, which is not C Python, to bring performance improvements to typical Python code. So, <clears throat> first, a little bit about myself. So, I, the talk today is uh, out of um, work I did this summer for three months with the Institute for Artificial Intelligence, where um, I optimized a, a, an open source Markov logic networks library using Scython uh, to bring about performance improvements. And over three months, we were able to speed up the code by around 30%. So I'm here to share those experiences and, and give you tips that I learned that would have been helpful had they been given to me at the start of my project. So, so that's sort of the background where I'm coming from. Um, so that being said, there's a little bit of a disclaimer. So this talk is not a thorough out outline of Scython capabilities or, or a completely exhaustive list of the best practices and techniques that you should use while using Scython. It's more of an introduction and uh, I'll try to give some personal insights that I found useful and try to um, explain why I think it would be useful for everyone to try using Scython in their programs. So let's start with a demonstration. Um, I hope everyone knows what the Fibonacci sequence is. Um, is there anyone at all who doesn't know this? Okay, great. So um, uh, generating the nth Fibonacci number is a standard ON problem. And generating the first n Fibonacci numbers is also an ON problem. Uh, however, because I want to demonstrate uh, speeding up code that is generally slow, I'm going to implement um, generating n Fibonacci numbers with an ON square algorithm just to show how even slow algorithms can be sped up using Scython. So uh, I'll show you using a Jupyter notebook. Um, this is this is my Fibonacci function. Everyone can see this, right? It's a recursive implementation, <laughs> typical, um, typical function. And I'm timing it and trying to figure out uh, with what the 34th Fibonacci number is. So let's go ahead and run this. So um, this, in this particular run, it turns out that uh, finding this number took 2.8 seconds. Now um, I'm going to show how you can use Scython to not change your algorithm and yet bring about a, a speed increase in your code. So the way to use Scython in a Jupyter notebook is uh, like this. First you need to load the extension. Then you need to tell Jupyter that this particular cell the code in this particular cell needs to be run using Scython. And now I'm going to make the actual changes to the code. And you'll see that I'll change only one line. I'll make three edits and the code will become an order of, it'll, it'll, the speed will increase by an order of magnitude. Scython requires you to define functions using cpdef instead of def. So that's the first difference. It allows you to declare a return type for each function. So when it allows you, that means that you can declare a return type, but it does, but you don't have to. So in this case, because I want to demonstrate um, speed increases, I'm going to do it because it's possible to do. So I'm going to say that the return type is an integer. And similarly, I'm also going to say that the parameter is a variable that is of type integer. So these are the only changes that I'm going to make, one single line. And now we'll see whether this brings any uh, performance improvements to our code. So I'll run the same test again, finding the 34th prime, uh, Fibonacci number. So um, you can clearly see that uh, Scython wins over, over traditional Python. So uh, with this background, I hope that um, you're interested in what I have to say. And uh, hopefully, I'll be able to um, bring about similar speed increases to other larger uh, code bases. So um, before we start, um, a, a high level uh, view of a programming language, especially for the purposes of this particular talk, um, I'm going to think of a programming language as a contract, 
a contract that, that between the user, the programmer, and the computer. So uh, when you write any code in any particular programming language, essentially you're writing instructions that the computer knows how to follow. So you, you follow particular syntax defined by Python, and the computer knows how to understand that syntax and perform the actions that you, that you intend. So uh, in, a, in a very broad sense, you can look at any, any particular programming language as one particular kind of contract between a human and a computer. Now, the implementation of this particular contract can vary. You can have a, a language that's compiled, you can have a language that's interpreted. You can have, like, uh, I don't know if people were here for the last meetup, we had a very interesting talk about uh, static typing and dynamic typing in programming languages. So th that these are the sort of variations that uh, make it, that make computers behave differently with different programming languages. However, I want to argue that uh, when a human is using a programming language, when, when you're writing code, uh, what, what matters is not so much whether uh, the language is compiled or interpreted from the point of view of you writing the code, but, more, uh, but what matters more is, is whether the syntax is easy to use, um, how much experience you have with the language, and, and other things that, that affect, that affect the usability of the language more than more than the actual uh, technical capabilities of that language. So for example, if a language has a lot of support online on Stack Overflow, people are more likely to use it even if it may not be the best particular implementation out there. So, so that being said, let's look at um, some uh, questions being asked on Stack Overflow just as a sort of crude metric to see language popularity. So you can see that, uh, I don't know if it's visible, the blue one is Python, and this green one at the bottom is C. So there's a very clear distinction. People seem to be more interested in Python. So that's, and I mean, everyone who's here, this is the Python user group, you're here because you like using Python, right? So, so there, there's a particular reason why people prefer Python, and that, in my opinion, is the simplicity that which the language brings to your code. Now, we, now uh, using Cython, we'll see how you can compromise a little bit on that simplicity and gain uh, efficiency that can rival C, which uh, you might not want to use for reasons apparent from this uh, image. So uh, these are the broad distinctions in my mind between Python and C. So the reason C is faster, so to speak, is because um, it allows lower level com uh, control over, over computer hardware. You can have manual memory allocation and so on. Whereas Python uh, does things under the hood without letting you bother about them so that you can focus on solving your particular problem, which is what you would like to do. Now, in 2018, it turns out that programming is um, now not just a contract between the, a human and a computer, like, like a programming language would define but also between a human and another human. And what I mean by this is, uh, is what I am given to understand corporations implement using code review and, and other quality control features. So when you write code, you want the computer to be able to execute that code. Yes, that's the first purpose. But a second and increasingly more important purpose is for other people to be able to read your code, to be able to maintain it, that's why you need to document your programs well so that so that other developers can come in and use them later so so this is the the second the the second part of the this contract which which is increasingly important and which we do not want to compromise upon so uh, so that that is what makes Cython particularly meritorious so Cython fits in quite deftly between C and Python it um, provides relatively simple syntax and um, high speed. Uh, let's see how this is achieved. So, so like I mentioned, a programming language is a contract. So C Python is one particular implementation of, the, of this contract, which is defined by the Python language. Now, Cython is a separate implementation of the same contract. So any code that is Python code is also Cython code. But the way the computer implements this particular contract is different. Cython, the contract that the, the user has between, between them and the uh, computer allows for static typing, which is not allowed in C Python, which is the reference implementation of the Python contract. 
So in that sense, Cython is a superset of the Python programming language. Now, uh, it's supposed to be a superset, but uh, we'll see uh, at what point this, uh, this distinction fails. So, um, so th this is another difference between Python and Cython. Uh, generally, Python codes just uh, interpret it directly. In a Jupyter notebook, you can't really see the steps uh, be, uh, under the hood that happen when I use Cython magic, but uh, I'll demonstrate that. When you're actually using Cython, the same Python code, uh, you need to compile first. There's an extra step. So this is a slight inconvenience, you may say. But, uh, but like you saw, the speed gain at runtime is enormous. So you have Python code, you compile it, Cython generates C for you, and then you can run that like you would run any other Python program. Now the reason for that asterisk over there is because, uh, like I mentioned, Cython is a superset of Python. So you can compile any Python code, but you can also compile code that the Python interpreter would reject. So uh, when I define my function with cpdef, the Python interpreter would complain because it doesn't understand cpdef, but Cython does. So, so you, can, you can compile any Python code with these slight modifications and generate Cython uh, C. So let's see how that happens. Okay, so I'm going to use the same example. So I have the same Fibonacci function over here in this file. I hope everyone can see this. Is, is the font too small? Can anyone not see this? All right, great. So, um, so I have the same Fibonacci function. And like I mentioned, uh, there's, a, there's an extra compilation step. Uh, for, to compile a Cython code, first you need to define a setup.py file, and this is how you define that. Um, it, this is essentially a directive to Cython to convert every single PYX file in the current working directory into Cython code. So if you notice, uh, when, you con when you convert Python code to Cython, you also change the, the extension. Uh, it's no longer a .py file, it's now a .pyx file. Uh, before I do that, let's first uh, run the same Python code and it should take around two seconds to to run again, let's see that. Oops. I'm running test.py, which uses fib.py. Test.py is the same test that I was running before. It's printing the, it's finding the 34th Fibonacci now. Right, so this took three seconds. Now I'm going to convert the Fibonacci to a Cython function. So I'll say cpdef like before. I'll define the return type as an integer. And I'll say that the parameter is also an integer. Now I'll rename the file so that it's a pyx file. And now we can compile this. So the compilation is a, Cython is still um, not that mature. So the current best way to compile, uh, to run the compilation is this. You say python3 setup.py build, build underscore ext hyphen hyphen in place. Oops. And this compiles your uh, Cython file. So this will compile fib.pyx and Cython will generate the C equivalent of my Python code. A lot of uh, output, but the, the point is that this has generated this uh, .so file that you can see over here. So this is a file that Cython has generated for me, which uh, I can use from my Python programs and will act actually execute this code that I wrote in in the same speed that you would typically expect from the C programming language. So l let's go ahead and see this happening. I'll run test.py again, and you can see this took only 0 0.04 seconds. So there's a, there's a tremendous uh, speed gain to be obtained if you manage to use Cython correctly.
So, uh, w w so now when I mention that Cython is a superset of Python, what are the differences between uh, Cython and Python? So whenever you have a variable that is an integer that you know is an integer and it's, and it's going to stay an integer throughout the duration of its life, then you can type it as an integer just by saying int n, like I did for the parameter and the return type. You can do the same thing for characters, floats, you can have double precision floats, the usual. You can also type uh, more complicated Python objects like lists and dictionaries. That's an example of a dict. That's a dictionary being, uh, so Cython will now uh, use struct access and it will be able to access the elements of the dictionary in genuinely in O1 time rather than amortized O1 time. Uh, you redefine functions instead of using def. Now uh, you can, there's another kind of definition that Cython allows that is cdef instead of cpdef and the difference between cpdef and cdef is rather subtle. So what happens technically when you define a function as, as cpdef is that Cython creates a version of it that's in C and a version of it that's in Python that's calling the C function under the hood. And any Python code that, that you have first calls Cython's Python version of your function which in turn calls the Cython C version of your function. So, you, so that's how you get your speed gain. The reason there's this intermediate uh, Python function is because your plain Python code needs to access this C code somehow and this is Cython's way of allowing that. Now when you define a function as cdef, uh, you're saying that you don't care about this uh, function in the middle. You only want a C version. Now if you only have a C version, you're right, you can't use this from typical Python code. But if you can't use it, then why would you create it? You would create it if you call it from other C code and Cython is basically C code. So if you have an, another function written completely in Cython, then you can call a cdef function from this, from this Cython function. Now, uh, this is rather complicated. Does it generate headers as well? Sorry? Does it generate headers to call the function the shared object? Yes, uh, Cython takes care of the headers. Uh, there's no, so the reason I like Cython is because when I learned C programming in college, for instance, I had to write my header files myself and I would invariably make mistakes. But uh, Cython takes care of that and sort of makes things easier. Now, um, the, the difference between cdef and cpdef I already explained, but in terms of runtimes, it's a very marginal difference, which is why in the example I didn't even bother showing cdef. Uh, cpdef code ends up running in almost the same time as cdef code. And this is rather obvious if you think about it. Uh, the, the Python overhead is going to happen only once. The first time your Python code calls your C code, at one point there is, a, there is an intermediate function being used by Cython. But after that, in the entire body of the function, it's still the C code running. So you get pretty much the same speed gains you would get with cdef. Now, um, Cython also allows uh, other Python constructs to be uh, typed. So for example, uh, classes can be defined as cdef classes. This is slightly complicated. You need to create a an extra file which is similar to the headers that we just uh, talked about. I'll explain this with, a, with an example soon. Now, um, Cython also allows you to temporarily disable the global interpreter lock. Now, I have personally not used this feature, but uh, for those um, programs that extensively use multi-threading, this can presumably uh, help increase speed even further. So the, the concepts behind Cython speed increases are all related to static typing. There's a question mark for the last two because I have not used those personally, but um, uh, apparently the static typing that Cython allows for is the reason that uh, interfacing with C structs and using Nogil brings uh, improvements to Python code anyways. Um, the point is that static typing is able to bring th these improvements because every time your code runs, um, the Python interpreter no longer has to worry about the types of the variables. So uh, typically when you have dynamically typed programs, each time uh, the your um, 
computer encounters say n in this case it checks whether n is actually an integer as your code expects it to be and only then it performs the operations required when you declare that n is always an integer you take that guarantee upon yourself so it's a slight shift in responsibility from the con from what the contract defined as the responsibility of the computer to the responsibility of the human so so this slight shift uh, is a is able to bring about this um, uh, vast improvement in speed now um, hopefully you already are interested in cython and want to use it but uh, just in case uh, there's more reasons required uh, i would like to go through them uh, here there's a i have a rough chart uh, comparing c and python in terms of speed and simplicity now the advantage about cython is that um, it doesn't fit in at any one point in this graph like c or python would it allows you to customize um, what balance between simplicity and speed you want. Now, in the Fibonacci example that I showed you, I wanted to change only one line. I could have changed more lines, I could have typed more variables had they existed, but it turns out that just typing that one line brings the, the major portions of the speed changes that you get anyways. So in a sense, uh, there are only some parts of a program that require being typed to be able to uh, harness the speed gain that you can even if you rewrite the entire program in C. Now uh, Cython therefore fits, uh, it, it fits in, uh, at a spectrum of across this entire graph. You can, you can choose to type certain variables in the beginning, see whether the speed gain is appropriate and enough. And if not, you can incrementally increase speed further by, by typing more variables. Uh, also, I would say that Cython generates potentially higher quality C code. Now, of course, if you hire a, a person who's an expert at C programming, they'll be able to uh, rewrite your code better than Cython when Cython compiles your Python into C. It, the, that code will be more human readable and it will be much shorter. But uh, it's also likely to be error prone in case the program is larger than Fibonacci. So if your code base is huge, then Cython requires very little investment on the part of the human and sort of outsources the, the C code generation to the computer. And this finally results in faster development times. So uh, we want code to run fast, that's true, but we also want to be able to develop code fast. So the trade-off between these two historically has always skewed in favor of run times. Developers times was less valuable than run times because you'd run code millions of times and write it only once. But uh, that is changing slowly and um, as contracts are increasingly shifting to human-human versus human-computer, I think that it's important to also minimize development time and Cython Now, um, so the example so far was, was just a single Fibonacci function, but it turns out that you can optimize large code bases using Cython as well. Um, Scikit-learn, SciPy, Pandas are all libraries that extensively use um, Cython static compilation and there have been no errors because of this compilation in their production libraries so far. That being said, um, Cython is still at version 0 0.3. In fact, 0 0.3 came out just last month. Um, and even though Cython is supposed to be a superset of Python, it is not yet a, su a complete superset of the Python programming language. What that means is that there are still certain Python constructs that the Cython compiler is unable to handle. Now, um, this is unfortunately not documented very well on the internet, so you might find articles that say Cython is a superset of Python, so you should use Cython. Now, I would be cautious in that case. Um, just because Cython is supposed to be a superset of Python doesn't mean that your Python code is currently Cython compatible. I learned this the hard way um, when I was working on PRACMLN at uh, the Institute for Artificial Intelligence. One of, the, one of the files that I had to optimize had uh, nested classes, which is not that uncommon in, in Python programs. And it turns out that the Cython compiler, as of uh, June this year, 
can't handle those. So uh, that's something that that's that's uh, it's an it's a problem you can't solve. You have to rewrite the code so that it doesn't use nested classes. But the point is that uh, Scython is still in its current form, 0.3. It's still Turing complete. So technically speaking, it is possible to rewrite any code that you have in Scython terms. And depending on the feasibility of that particular task, I would argue that it's at least worth exploring. Now, uh, when you are optimizing a large code base, um, uh, you wouldn't know, uh, you typically wouldn't know what to type at, at first. Of course, one option is to type every single variable there is. But uh, like I mentioned before, that is unnecessary. So there are two ways to figure out what variables to type. And those are annotation and profiling. And I'll explain both these through the use of examples. So let's look at annotation first. Uh, annotation is a Scython feature which uh, tells you the amount of Python interaction any compiled Scython code snippet has. By Python interaction, I'm referring to things that cannot be optimized by Scython. They cannot be translated directly to C. So the way to check uh, how the annotation is working in Jupyter Notebook is to just add annotate after the Scython magic. And let's first annotate the old Python function to see why it was slow. So this was the old Python function. Now Python code is Scython code, so Scython should be able to handle this function. And I'm going to annotate it to see uh, which lines in this particular function are required, are the reason for, th for the function being slow. So this is the output that Scython generates. You can see yellow lines hint at Python interaction. So what this means is that a yellow line has generated more C code than a line that is less, less yellow. You want to see this C code, you can just click on the line. So you can see that the def actually creates C code that is this large. Right. Now, um, if you start typing variables, then Scython can start um, optimizing this code and reduce its size, and therefore reduce the the amount of time it takes for your program to run. It's generating boost. Sorry. Boost Python C++ code. Sorry. It's generating boost Python C. What I'm sorry. What do you mean by boost Python C? The Py object and all that. Yes. Objects that are boost Python. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't follow. We can, we can talk later. So, okay, so uh, what I want to point out is uh, if we type the parameter and we say that n is always an integer, then how does that change the, uh, the annotated func uh, function that we see? Can anyone guess what differences we would observe if we declare that n is always an integer so that uh, the computer no longer has to check for that? Any, any guesses, anyone? Right, line number two would change. That's a that's a pretty decent guess because uh, when you're checking whether n is equal to zero or n is equal to one, before doing that, you need to check whether n is actually an integer. But now you don't because I'm telling you that it's an integer. So let's see if that actually happens. It does happen. Uh, so that line is now completely white. That means that it's been translated directly into C code. Now, similarly, we can see what the result is when we had the entire function in Scython. The entire function became C code. This is why it was fast, because it was no longer running Python, it was running optimized C under the hood. Now, I explained to you that CPDEF creates a, creates a sort of wrapper so that Python can use a function that's not written in Python. If I use CDEF instead of CPDEF, can someone guess what happens? It yeah, it just it generates only C code, so there is no yellow lines in the output. The entire code and the entire function has been written as C now. So any Cython code you have anywhere can now call fib and you won't be running Python, you'll be running C. You'll be running C that's as optimized as it can be. So this is as fast as Python code can get. Now, there are alternate implementations of, of the Python contract, so to speak. I'm sure people here have heard about PyPy. 
Now, PyPy is faster than C Python, but it can't compare with this. So, so this is as fast as Python code can get, and Cython really allows you to do that without making very major modifications to your Python code. So that's why in performance critical um, applications, I would encourage everybody to to use Cython. So, so this was annotation. So if you have a large code base, uh, how many other lines it is, you can annotate it, see where the yellow lines lie, and then identify the variables being used there, and then type them. Uh, but there's another way to do this. Uh, so OK, I I'll also demonstrate annotation in a standalone file. Just uh, So we had, we had this standalone file, fib.pyx, this file that I showed, showed you over here. We can generate the same annotations from the terminal also. We can just say Cython minus A fib dot pyx. And this, this generates a HTML file, fib dot HTML, which when you open it shows you the same view. So you don't have to use a Jupyter notebook if you're doing annotation. You can do it on source files as well. Okay, now moving on to profiling. So uh, first, before profiling, uh, can anyone see any problem with annotations and why they might mislead people when they're trying to identify uh, bottlenecks in their code? All right. Uh, it turns out that Python interaction is actually not a very reliable metric. And I actually uh, sort of hinted towards this when I explained the difference between CDEF and CPDEF. The reason there's no appreciable speed difference between CPDEF execution and CDEF execution is because function calls typically make up a very small portion of a program's runtime. Whatever the body of the recursive function is, in this case Fibonacci, that takes up more time than actually calling the function itself. So this is similar to the 80-20 rule, which is that 80% uh, of the time your computer's executing a particular program, it's executing only 20% of the code. And in the remaining 80% uh, remaining 20% of the time, it's executing 80% of your code. So you actually need to optimize only 20% of your code to be able to get 80% of the potential speed gain. And the point in annotation and profiling is to try to identify where that 20% lies. Now, uh, because uh, because annotation can't really tell you how much time is being spent in a particular code snippet, you might say that uh, it's better to use annotation, but also think about it yourself. So in my case, I wrote the Fibonacci function. I know that as soon as I type n, the variable n, that is going to bring speed increases because that's the only variable I ever uh, test for. I test if it's equal to zero or if it's equal to one. But it turns out that people don't recommend this approach. Um, this, the second quote over here is actually right from Cython's website. They say you should never optimize without profiling your code. And then they actually write, let me repeat this, never optimize without profiling. So it turns out that um, even people who write code for years and years actually don't have a very great idea about which parts of their code are actually uh, running for long and which parts are not. So, but luckily there, there's automated ways to solve this problem and there we go into profiling. So um, has anyone ever profiled Python code using C profile, which is a built-in profiler that comes with C Python? All right, right, great. So, so Cython allows you to use, continue to use the same profiler. So uh, the, the only changes you need to make is uh, add a directive to the compiler to indicate that your code is going to be profiled. So profiling information doesn't get lost. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So I had this fib.pyx. I'm going to open a copy of the same file that has this uh, uh, compiler directive added. And this is how you add the compiler directive. You just add one line at the top telling the Cython compiler that you're going to be profiling this code. So this was, this is uh, with uh, profiling. This is without profiling. And there's only a, oops, there's only a single line difference at the end, at the start. So this has to be the first line in your Cython file. It can't be the second line, as of now. Um, and 
once you add this, uh, the Cython compiler will start profiling your code. Now, um, you can profile using C profile. I'm, I'm running out of time, so I'm not going to explain how C profile works. That's the same as it works for Python. You can use it the same way for Cython. Rather, I'm going to show you some um, uh, profile codes that, uh, that I encountered when I was working with Cython. So to show you what a large code base looks like when it's profiled. So this is a, a visualizer called SnakeWiz. It visualizes the profiles that are generated once you use C profile. Now, uh, this view basically shows the stack trace. This is the first function that was called second, third, fourth, and so on. And for each function, I have the amount of time that was spent in that function. So when I look at this, I immediately know which functions are the ones that uh, most of my execution happens in. And I know that these are the functions that I need to speed up. So for my particular project, it turned out that when I, whenever I was doing exact inference on a Markov logic network, uh, that was taking time. So it was taking, hundred and, it was taking 203 seconds. Now, uh, I pr I, after profiling this, I typed the relevant variables inside exact.py. And you can see the difference in the Cython version after uh, when the and it's taking 146 seconds to run instead of 213. Now, why is, why is the difference not as appreciable as with Fibonacci? There's many reasons. Um, this is a larger code base, so uh, profiling it and optimizing it is more complicated. But the single biggest reason is that when I did this, I didn't know anything about Cython. But now I do. So when I show you Fibonacci, I know exactly what to do to actually speed it up. When I did this, I was still learning about Cython, and therefore it seems that my optimizations aren't as good as optimization can be. However, it still makes a significant difference, so I would urge everybody to at least try this. Now, uh, this is the last bit of the presentation. Um, this is about getting help on Cython. I mentioned that uh, there is no real uh, documentation online about how Cython is not a complete superset yet, and so on. It turns out, generally, uh, help for Cython online is pretty scarce. So if you're anything like me, then you need Stack Overflow, or you can't do anything. So whenever Stack Overflow goes down, you take sick leave, and you don't go to work. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, if that's how you operate, um, Cython doesn't really work for you because there is nothing on Stack Overflow. Here's the same graph that I showed you before with Cython questions. You can see there's hardly any. So uh, it's very difficult to get help, you would think. But it turns out there's a very helpful mailing list. You ask any questions you have, they get back to you within a day. And uh, whatever, whatever problems you have, at whatever level of proficiency you are, they are very helpful. So, so there is really no reason left to not use Cython. Um, you can use these links to see the work I did about Cython. There were some tips that I didn't have time to go into today because it was only 30 minutes. And if you have any further questions, please contact me on LinkedIn and uh, I'll be happy to help you out. Thank you. minutes of questions just right now and then maybe afterwards we will get some more food or a short break before the next week. So do we have any questions here? Can you show this demo of how you do a return type of a cube or a dictionary? How I do a return type of a dictionary? Yeah, sure. Sure, yeah, I can do that. So let's say instead of returning the result, I was going to return a dictionary that had or I was going to return a tuple that had zero comma result. Is this uh, yeah, your question? No. Right. I, I yeah, I, that's right. I need to change the whole function. Uh, that's OK. Right. So 
this does the same thing. Dictionaries. You can even have direct arrays. So people generally don't use arrays when they use uh, Python. But you can see import Python's implementation of a single one-dimensional array and use that, and it's much faster when you so do like MD arrays and data frames they all the time. Uh, Python is known for having very good compatibility with NumPy. So uh, if you're referring to NumPy arrays, two-dimensional arrays. Then Python actually goes so far as to remove the overhead between Python code calling NumPy, which is basically C. So Python actually directly calls the C from its C from the C code that it generates. So NumPy and Python mix very well, and that's very well tested. So that's my problem. Multiprocessing and threading. Right. So multiprocessing is actually not generate multi-threading keywords, but and Python the C Python implementation. Uh, is not great for multi threading. However, Cyton uh, allows you to uh, get rid of the queue. That's number seven. You can, so, the way to do this is to just, uh, I've never done this myself, but uh, the syntax to do this is to just say with no queue. And now, whatever code you write, it doesn't, uh, the global interpreter of will not apply. So, Cyclone is supposed to have uh, great multi threading support uh, using Google. But that being said, I have personally not used it, so I can't vouch for it. So, uh, what about uh, uh, user defined data? A user defined object in the app that works as well. Right. Uh, sorry, I was going to show you that. I ran out of time. Uh, so, I'm going to show you the examples from the work that I did over this summer. So let's look at an example file. So this is a user-defined uh, data type that, that is supposed to represent logical predicates. Okay. And it has two attributes. It has uh, the name of the app of the predicate, which is a string, and it has a list. Now this is a .pyx file that I've defined the class with C there, like I like I mentioned. But this alone is not enough. You also need to create what is what C users will know as the header file. So this is how the header file works. You just you just define the types of the attributes. Now this only works when the attributes are constant. You can't keep adding an attribute. You can't add a third attribute to the predicate type anymore. So in that sense, I can put some restrictions uh, on what you can do. But like I mentioned. You have to give away a little bit of simplicity to be able to get that speed gain. So overall, I think it's a trade-off that's worth making. So I can show you other examples of this. Uh, here's another type, uh, custom custom data type with a bunch of attributes. And here's how you how you create the PXD file, the corresponding PXD file. Uh, this public keyword over here is. Similar to the difference between CPDEF and CDEF, is to allow Python to access this from from code that is not being optimized by Python. So the MRF variable can be accessed by both Python code and by Python code, C code, but the MLN variable can only be accessed by C code. Now the reason I've done it like this is because uh, over the course of three months, I was able to. Uh, make sure that all access to the MLN variable happened through Cyton optimized code. I did reach the same stage for the MRF variable, so it's still currently uh, public over here, so that legacy Python code can still access it. However, eventually, when you finish optimizing it and get to a stage that's that's better than this, then you'll have a version where you won't need public code. Yeah. I'm just curious, if you synchronize the code but without any annotations, what is the runtime for your Fibonacci example? Uh, so, uh, annotation doesn't have any. I think not on type annotations. Right, okay. Yeah, that, that's a great question. We can try that and see what happens. So, so in a sense, because all Python code is Python code, we can run Python code as, as if it was Python. So, let's see whether that brings any speed into the 
Now this is this varies very greatly between code snippets. So I'm not very sure what happened in this case. But what I can tell you is just because it works here doesn't mean it will work everywhere. Or just because it doesn't work right now doesn't mean it won't work in your user. So it's, it's still pretty good, much, much better than Python, but this is not something that you can apply universally. It, it varies very clearly. Okay, I would say thank you very much. Thanks, everyone.